12, 5, negative 1, 3. To your average individual, these numbers are completely random and totally meaningless. But that changes if you ask the average disc golfer. Almost What'd you throw? Oh, uh, I threw this Calvin Heimberg Tour Series Destroyer. Selfless plug. There you go. There you go. On June 26, 2007, the PDGA approved a new distance driver mold for Innova, which would end up being named the Destroyer. 354 discs were made for their test run in Champion Plastic just one month after it had been approved. Then shortly thereafter, the Proto Star Destroyer was released with the classic Innova stamp with the compass. And these discs were known to be extremely true to their numbers and they still fetch a very pretty penny on the market. Star Plastic didn't exist, and so that's why it went Champion Plastic for the first prototypes and then eventually they were able to create prototype Star Destroyers. The first official release of Star Destroyers were called PFN Destroyers or Pre-Flight Number Destroyers. And for those who don't know what that means, pre-flight numbers indicate basically Innova had a shift in about around 2010 where they first added their flight numbers to their discs and so everything before they added them are pre-flight numbers obviously and then everything after you can obviously tell that they have the flight numbers there and so you don't really need to specify. They came in three different molds star D, star DS, and D slash S which is also how stable they are from most to least. This allowed for the destroyer to handle a variety of shots from a meat hook to pretty straight flyer to maybe even a roller disc once it got beat in. Uh, Innova Pros are using these heavily and I'm no different. I use these as my main distance driver in all conditions. I have five right now and I'll give them an order of stability. The flippiest one is one I've had for a few years. It was an almost perfect combination of numbers. Fast, good glide, just a little bit of turn to get max distance, but then enough reliable fade so that even the top pros could rip on it and trust it to come back. The disc was quickly added to a lot of top pros at Innova's bags, including one of the most important members of this history, Avery Jenkins. That was a clip of Avery Jenkins winning the 2009 World Championship. And I think it's interesting because now you can see just how far coverage has actually come. From being filmed on probably what was a flip phone, to now we have whole channels dedicated to it. And so Innova decided to reward him with a signature disc for his effort. And thus, the two-line AJ Destroyer was born. Why was it called two-line? And that's because... His name and title, Avery Jenkins, 2009 World Champion, were split into two different lines. This would last from 2010 up until 2013 when then it was released as the three-line destroyer. So now you have a top world champion performing with his name on that disc. And as disc golf was just beginning to grow, the destroyer was one of the first discs that most people had ever heard about. Of course, the man most associated with that is Paul Macbeth. My name is Paul McBeth. I'm from Huntington Beach, California. I'm a professional disc golfer and three-time disc golf world champion. Then four-time world champion Paul McBeth had just capped off one of the most dominating seasons in disc golf history, arguably the best ever. In 2015, he played 26 tournaments and he won 20 of them. Oh, and in the other six, he never missed a podium. Avery Jenkins was slowly falling off the tour scene, and so Innova decided to change the Star Destroyer 
to be a Paul Macbeth signature disc. So then what did Paul do? Obviously, he's still one of the, if not the, top players in the sport. And for most of that time, he was throwing Innova and he was throwing Destroyers. Jomez Productions, Central Coast Disc Golf, and a handful of other production companies all started to begin growing rapidly at this point. And what did you see being thrown? You saw the Star Destroyer being thrown by Paul Macbeth. And so now, Ricky Wysocki, Calvin Heimberg, basically... If you've been sponsored by Innova, it's almost a rite of passage to get your name on a Star Destroyer. And it wasn't just the fact that this disc made its way into so many top pros bags. It was that it changed the sport entirely. Basically, every company now has a Destroyer-like disc, and that's a pretty common term to hear. Just look at the Discraft Nuke. Same exact numbers and made and prototyped just two years after the Star Destroyer. They saw their success and their players saw the consistency of the disc and they wanted it in their bag. That brings us to today, where the Destroyer is still routinely one of the top selling discs on Infinite Discs, and if you look at their top 20 discs of the week, the Star Destroyer is usually pretty high up there, and pretty consistently it takes the number one spot. Other notable Star Destroyers include the 10 year anniversary Star Destroyer made in 2017 to of course commemorate 10 years of the disc's existence and more recently you have the Halo Star Destroyers which are becoming a little more common but boy do they still look good and the rest is history. And before I leave I want to talk a little bit about the Wraith because on paper, these two discs are just about the same. The Wraith has one less speed than the Destroyer, and I actually bag a Wraith over a Destroyer. So why didn't the Wraith get all of the huge popularity as the Destroyer? And obviously, the Wraith is a popular disc. It's not, it's not one that's forgotten about, but when you think disc golf, a lot of people's first thought is the Destroyer. And I think the key aspect, the huge difference between the two was the difference in the Tour Series. The Wraith never really had a super popular Tour Series disc. I mean, even now, you have James Conrad being one of the few Innova pros who consistently throws it at a top level. Almost everybody instead just uses the Destroyer. Do you want a Ricky Raptor Destroyer or a Star Wraith? Marketing was one of the huge keys in getting the Destroyer to the place where it was, and where it still is today. Looking at the infinite discs, like most popular discs ever sold, you can see that the Destroyer is routinely sitting at the top of the charts. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.